on employment improvement plans. But in a five-page letter to the board, School District 2 Superintendent Terry Bauck recommends that Canvick be dismissed. And in that letter, Bauck says Canvick lacks the basic skills necessary to be an effective teacher and that he engaged in inappropriate and damaging conduct. Bauck also told the board he has no confidence in Canvick's ability to contribute as a school employee. The superintendent's letter included accusations that Canvick made inappropriate sexual comments to students. Canvick, along with union representative Scott McCullough, also testified at that hearing today. Canvick can appeal the board's decision. Crow tribal officials say they are unable to account for as much as $14.5 million in federal transportation grants that were given to the tribe in 2016. That information from a federal audit that was released today. The Office of the Inspector General of the Department of the Interior says the tribe failed to file financial reports, track expenses, and were unable to provide supporting documents for the contracts or submit a single audit for the 2016 fiscal year. The contracts in question were part of a tribal transportation agreement with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. That program was designed to provide engineering, construction and maintenance for roads, bridges and other transportation infrastructure related to tribal needs. Tribal officials told auditors they discovered that former financial department officials apparently did not know how to properly manage federal contracts. MTM News has reached out to Chairman A.J. Not Afraid to get a response, but we've not heard back yet. Now, the events described in this audit report took place during the tenure of former chairman Darren Old Coyote. A new study commissioned by the Montana Chamber of Commerce says the early closure of coal strip power plants 3 and 4 will have a huge negative impact on the entire state. Critics of that study say, though, it ignores key information that will offset those impacts. Now, the study by the University of Montana Bureau of Business and Economic Research examined the effects if coal strip plants 3 and 4 close in the year 2027. Bureau Director Patrick Barkey says it will mean the loss of as many as 3,300 jobs statewide, ranging from coal mining to plant operators to suppliers. Chamber President Webb Brown says it commissioned the study to look at the options facing the state about the closure of the coal strip plants. The study also says Montana electricity consumers will end up paying higher prices because they'll have to pay, po pay for power from out-of-state sources. But a leading environmental lobby says that assumption is not true and hedges with the Montana Environmental Information Center in Helena, says a coal strip closure will mean negative impacts for some, but not for consumers. When you look at uh, solar, when you look at wind energy, those are outcompeting coal in the marketplace right now. And they're pretending in this study that in 20 years, coal will be outcompeting these resources. That's, it's not true today. Why would it be true in 20 years? We need to be prepared. Is there an opportunity to continue the, the plant going longer? Can we look at other ways of uh, adapting uh, for the tax base, for the personal side as well, workforce training? So no time like the present. Uh, let's get started at looking at it now. Now the two oldest Colster plants, Colster Punas 1 and 2, are slated for closure by 2022, but no date's been set for the closure of the newer plants, three and four, which are co-owned by six different companies. President Trump rallying supporters in South Carolina tonight, this ahead of the state's crucial runoff election set for tomorrow. The president's wide-ranging speech tonight also tackled immigration along with other controversies. Angelica Alvarez has the latest for us. Thank you so much. President Trump urged South Carolina voters to cast their ballots for incumbent Governor Henry McMaster in the state's runoff election Tuesday. Please get your out tomorrow and vote. The campaign stop came as House Republicans struggled to come up with a bill to overhaul the nation's immigration system. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. Just days after signing an executive order to stop separating families at the border, the president now says illegal immigrants should be deported without due process. You're coming into the country illegally. We don't want you in the country. That's it. It's now over. During the rally, President Trump spoke out about the political hostility fueled by the immigration debate and took aim at Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters, do you believe her? 
Over the weekend, Waters called on a crowd to confront the president and his cabinet, just like the Virginia restaurant owner who refused to serve White House press secretary Sarah Sanders. Don the con man will say anything. He is the one uh, that's responsible for promoting violence. In a tweet earlier, the president also called out Harley Davidson for moving some of its motorcycle production overseas. I want the barriers taken down. I want our farmers to be able to trade. I want to be able to sell cars in there just like they sell cars in here. And it's all going to work out. The EU recently applied steep duties on American products like Harley's in retaliation for the Trump administration's tariffs on European steel and aluminum. Angelica Alvarez, CBS News, the White House. President Trump says he's also praying for South Carolina Republican congressional candidate Katie Arrington. Arrington, who recently defeated Mark Sanford, was involved in a car crash last week, but did survive. After fishing up some support for Montana's GOP candidates, Donald Trump Jr. and his girlfriend spent the weekend here in Montana, taking in more of what the Big Sky State has to offer. From meeting with supporters to fly fishing on the Stillwater River to some long-range shooting, the president's son took in many of the state's iconic sites with his girlfriend, Fox News anchor Kimberly Guilfoyle. Trump Jr. praised Montana's beauty and the support he and his father received around the state. Trump Jr. was here in Billings Friday to advocate for GOP Senate nominee Matt Rosendale in his challenge against Democratic Senator John Tester. Trump Jr. posted these pictures of fishing the Stillwater on his social media accounts. On to the weather scene now. Q2 Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire joining us. And finally, Bob, time to turn on the sprinkler system yeah. and to fill those swimming pools, something that really hasn't been available yeah, to us it's now. It's been very dry. It's very dry today. The next couple of days is going to be kind of dry. But, you know, it was uh, nine days in a row we had a lot of precipitation. And let me show you just how much rain we did have. The record was 11 days in a row. Well, we had rain, measurable rain for nine days in a row. And you need to notice here, uh, take a look at the, on the 16th. That's when we had 7,700. So on the, on the 18th, they had 1.14 inches. Uh, on June 22nd, we had 0.73 inches of precipitation. And you add it all together and we come up to 3.27 inches. That was quite a wet stretch of nine days of precipitation. In fact, if you take all of June's normal precipitation and add it to July's normal precipitation, that would only be 3.44 inches. So we, we got very close to that in just nine days. We are looking at a dry trend and we'll chat about that coming up in a few more minutes. All right. Thanks, Bob. Montana Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney was at Barron Brewing in Missoula today there to honor the life of Rebecca Romero. Romero was struck and killed in a hit and run accident back on June 17th. Romero was a recent graduate from the University of Montana and had just recently joined the Montana National Guard. Guard members also on hand to present Romero's family with a special flag and to pay tribute to their fallen comrade. Daniel Grady is accused of hitting Romero with his vehicle. Grady is still in jail being held on a $100,000 bond. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, uh, it was a chance to honor those who had been mistreated for centuries. Tonight, we take a look back at the opening of the Plains Indians Museum in Cody. Plus, the soccer match got the kicker of its dreams, but he then got the red card before he could even make a goal. Later in sports, former Coal Strip baseball player Craig Perry. Now in the eye of the College World Series, Scott brings us his story coming up. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.